The following program has been brought to you in part by Sennheiser and the Airline Pilots Association. Do you fly out of O'Hare or Miami? We'll tell you how life could get easier. Middle Eastern carriers are hauling into new markets. Are you jump seating soon? You can't afford to miss this story. Plus, a pilot story as a military reservist on the front lines. All of this and more here on The Flight Deck. Hello, I'm Sharon Varab. Welcome to The Flight Deck. Known crew member, the specialized security screening system for airline pilots is expected to debut soon. Chicago O'Hare and Miami International are the first of seven airports to be brought online for a 90-day test. This period ensures that the system meets all TSA and airline requirements. Jointly sponsored by ALPA and ATA, the system will enhance security screening for pilots and passengers alike. JetBlue pilots have put their cards on the table. At the request of a strong majority of JetBlue pilots, ALPA filed with the National Mediation Board authorization cards for representation election. If the board sticks to its customary schedule, balloting is likely to start near the beginning of July and be completed near the end of the month. More than 270 JetBlue pilots spearheaded the ALPA representation drive as members of the JetBlue ALPA Organizing Committee and more continue to join that leadership group. To learn more, visit JetBlueOC.org. The Middle Eastern carriers are expanding their reach, this time into the cargo realm. Emirates and Qatar plan to turn their bases into global freight hubs. According to Bloomberg reports, Emirates will add as many as 18 cargo planes in Dubai, while Doha-based Qatar is converting 15 passenger jets to freighters. Qatar also recently bought 35% of Cargo Lux Airlines, Europe's biggest cargo-only carrier. In fact, the airline CEO says that Qatar will become one of the major players in the international freight market by 2015. The Transportation Security Administration recently approved the expansion of the use of cockpit jump seats for pilots. Under the new ALPA recommended procedures, airline pilots traveling as passengers will be able to ride in the cockpit of U.S. aircraft without being an employee of that specific carrier. As usual, the pilot in command will need to verify the pilot's identity and employment status before approving the jump seat request. ALPA has long supported these policy changes and believes that additional crew members on the flight deck will increase the overall safety and security of flight. According to the Wall Street Journal, airline seat capacity between the U.S. and Europe will grow 5.5 percent this summer. But did you know that the Airbus A380 accounts for most of the per-departure seat increase? Air France, in collaboration with Delta, will offer five new A380 flights a day across the Atlantic this summer. Starting in June, Air France's A380s connect Paris with three U.S. destinations, New York JFK, Washington Dulles, and San Francisco. Arizona won't be the only place retired airliners call home. The Alice Springs Airport just signed a deal for Australia's first storage and recycling facility. The 247 plus acres allotted for the project can hold up to 300 aircraft. Airport Authority says it's the first Asia Pacific based alternative to the United States for customers with aircraft based or operating throughout the region. Construction is set to begin in the second half of 2011. In June, the Federal Aviation Administration took aim at laser offenders. Responding to a spike in incidents, the agency said it would impose civil penalties against people who shine lasers at aircraft. ALPA President Captain Lee Moak joined the FAA in the fight against the growing number of laser attacks. The trend in laser attacks is clearly going in the wrong direction. Under a new FAA legal interpretation of its rules, anyone who points a laser at an airliner will be considered as having interfered with the flight crew and could be fined as much as $11,000. With the enhanced legal measures announced today and other important actions outlined in ALPA's plan, we can turn this trend around. Moak shared the association's action plan to safeguard the skies from laser attacks on aircraft and the risk they pose to aviation. 
To read the plan, visit our website at flightdeck.alpa.org. Here's a riddle. What's thinner, lighter, and faster and could change the way airline pilots access information to the cockpit? We'll tell you what it is after the break. From the first time I boarded a commercial plane as its pilot, I've embraced the responsibility I have to the safety of my passengers and crew. And I have the best flight gear, even the headset, certified for commercial duty. It lets me concentrate on the task at hand, making this the safest flight my passengers will ever have. The feature-packed HMEC 26 provides long wearing comfort and more than 18 dB of noise reduction. Try the HMEC 26 on your next flight and hear the difference for yourself. Hi, my name is Maury Krasner from Buffalo, New York. I like this pilot's why it's so bumpy going through clouds. Thanks for asking, Maury. As the Earth heats up during the day, different surfaces heat up at different rates. This creates thermals, which are columns of rising air. The warmer the air, the faster the air rises. This is actually what makes the white cumulus clouds puffy, and that's also what makes them bumpy. Before the break, we asked, what's thinner, lighter, and faster, and could change the way airline pilots access information in the cockpit? The answer is the iPad. Here's ALPA Communications Specialist Jen Sutton with more on how Alaska airline pilots are using the iPad in the cockpit. Imagine carrying around this instead of this. For years, airlines have talked about moving to an electronic flight bag in which the data and information pilots need is stored electronically rather than on paper. Well, that day is upon us. Last month, Alaska Airlines distributed iPads to its pilots. In a pound and a half, the iPads can hold all of the information in a 40-pound flight bag, and then some. We could never do this before, yet we were in some ways responsible for the outcome of accessing this information as a pilot. So we kept them libraried on the airplane, we kept some in the pilot's bags, what we could get in the pilot's bags, and so now, in the palm of your hand, you have all of these manuals. And once we can drop printing, we're free to format them so that they, we can access the information much quicker, much better, and so it's pretty appealing. Pilots can now use their iPads to perform tasks such as viewing manuals in the air above 10,000 feet or downloading weather on the ground. In the past, we've only had two books at our disposal. Now I can see all of the MELs, company manuals, aircraft manuals uh, right at my fingertips at any time. If, after a trial period, the airline gains FAA approval, the iPad will replace the traditional flight bag entirely. We have to prove to the FAA and to ourselves that the iPad will perform as we've, we've planned. Once we've proved that, we'll be able to leave our uh, company manuals uh, at home. A piece of advice for any of you who will be using the iPad in the cockpit? Stay away from those angry birds. I'm Jen Sutton on the flight deck. It's no surprise that airline pilots have strong military ties, but you might not know that several still serve their countries in the reserves. Bearskin Airlines Captain Jeff McKelvey shares his story with the flight deck. 2008, I approached my, my boss, the chief pilot, Kevin Bedham, for leave of absence to go overseas to participate in Operation Apollo for the Canadian Forces. And again, it was immediately approved, and uh, they treated me really well along the way. My seniority was kept kept me updated while I was overseas as to what was going on with the company and how my training would progress as when I got back. And I was just really impressed with the way uh, they treated me and handled uh, the situation. Operation Apollo put Canadian troops in the campaign against terrorism following the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Corporal McKelvey trained for his deployment at Canadian Forces Base Shiloh for nine months. He was then sent to Camp Nathan Smith in Kandahar City where he served until May 2010. You know, a lot of the skills you gain in the military are, can be used anywhere. A lot of your decision-making skills, leadership skills, they're all used in the, the cockpit every day. And so even though yes, many of the skills you use in the infantry aren't transferable, there are a lot of the, the personal skills and the personal traits such as those in nature that uh, you do use every day. When Corporal McKelvey returned from his tour of duty, he was pleased to discover that his company honored the pledge of his chief pilot. We supported them all the way. And, uh, it means a lot to us. We, um, 
believe in uh, supporting our employees in every way we can, and it's a good way to give back. Not only did McKelvey keep his place on the seniority list, he got upgraded to captain. To read the full story, visit our website and click on Our Stories. Are you a pilot who loves science? Here's your chance to be a part of an educational experiment. Several research institutions are looking for pilots to participate in case studies on everything from data communications to flight deck procedures. For all of the details on how you can participate, go to flightdeck.alpa.org. Now for the golden segment. It's time to watch and win. First, congratulations, Joseph DeGrado, for making it to the next round. You were randomly selected from the last episode. Joseph will now be entered into the grand prize drawing along with five other winners. On to today's question. How much stake did Cutter buy in Cargo Lux Airlines? Visit our website to submit the answer for your chance to win a Sennheiser headset. Thank you for watching the Flight Deck. If you have any feedback about this episode, please let us know at flightdeck.alpa.org. Thanks again, and I'll see you next month here on the Flight Deck. <laughs>